So obviously um, mice are the most commonly used um, species for scientific research and therefore it's obviously important that we provide the best standards of welfare for them. So my PhD was um, looking at whether we could find new ways of measuring animal emotion. So this uh, builds on uh, Jane Hurst's previous work um, at the University of Liverpool. Um, so she's previously shown that tail handling, so the standard method that we actually use to handle these animals, induces stress and anxiety. But we were also interested to see whether that translated to a depressive-like state as well and induced some degree of depression. So explain to us, for this work, how do you measure the mental state of a mouse? That's a really interesting question. Um, so what we try to do is look for similarities, I suppose, in you know, how the mouse behaves as, as a human would behave if, if they were depressed. And one of the classic symptoms of depression is not really enjoying life anymore, not enjoying experiences, you know, seeing friends, going out, those sorts of things. So um, what we do is try to give something to the mice that's relevant for them. And we basically put them in a cage like this, um, and, but rather than give them water, we give them a sugar solution, which normally they really like. And what we find is, is that if they're in this sort of depressed-like state, then they'll drink much less sugar. And the really cool thing about our kit is that we can actually measure every individual lick that each mouse makes. So we can use that to actually look at how much they like it. So the more licks they have, or the faster they do them, uh, the more they like the solution. And again, you know, if they're depressed, they don't make as, as many licks as, as you'd expect. So why is this work important to the research community? So I think it's important because as researchers we have responsibility to our animals. Um, we should be working to make sure that they're kept in the best way when they're in our laboratories and reduce the amount of stress uh, that they experience. So I think you know, our work starts to show that um, you need to be handling animals using a tunnel or perhaps with cupped hands in order to sort of reduce the amount of stress that they're receiving. But I also think that it's important for our data collection so mice are used commonly to study human diseases and I suppose you know, we don't really want to think that the animals that we're using for this are in a particular um, state, so if they're particularly anxious or, in their de or if they're depressed, this might have particular importance if we're studying um, diseases of the brain or of the mind uh, because the data that we produce might not be as accurate and reliable as we'd like. So I think it's not just about the animals and their lives and their quality of lives, it's about the quality of the science as well. Obviously mice are widely used um, and often you have to pick up on very subtle differences between your diseased model and your control mice. And I think it's particularly important if you are administering novel drug treatments you obviously don't want the stress of tail handling to actually be masking any effect that you would have um, within your data. So are you saying we shouldn't handle them by their tails at all? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the most important part of handling the mice using these refined techniques, so using the tunnel, is actually getting them from the cage. So you don't want them to feel threatened in any way by capturing them by the tail from the cage. So once you have them from the cage, you're fine to put them on the cage lids and manipulate them as you would, health check them, that would be absolutely fine. They're absolutely fine with having their tail touched in that regard and sort of slightly restrained by the tail, but by no means am I saying that you should capture them from the cage using the tail.